Hello everyone and welcome back to Study Room. Thank you for choosing us as your study partner. So today we'll be studying about reflection of sound and human ear. Okay. So sound bounce, bounces off a solid or a liquid like a rubber ball, right? Like a rubber ball bounces off a wall. Like light, sound gets reflected at the surface of a solid or liquid and follows the same laws of reflection as you have studied in the earlier classes. The directions in which the sound is incident and is reflected make equal angles with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence. Okay. Right. And the three are in the same plane. An obstacle of larger size which may be polished or rough is needed for the reflection of the sound waves. Do you think sound reflects like light? Uh, well, let's do one experiment for the same. So, let's do this activity. Okay. So, take two identical pipes as shown in the figure. You, make, you can make the pipes using the chart paper. The length of the pipes should be sufficiently long as shown. Arrange them on a table near a wall. Keep a clock near the open end. Okay. And of one of the pipes and try to hear the sound of the clock through the other pipe. Adjust the position of the pipe so that you can best hear the sound of the clock. Now measure the angles of incidence and reflection and see the relationship between the angles. Lift, lift the pipe on the right vertically to a small height and observe what happens. In place of a clock, um, you can place maybe a mobile phone, right? Or a tablet. Okay, it can also be used. So, you will be surprised to see the results. Do this experiment for sure and you will be really happy that, you know, this is such an interesting topic. So, what is echo? Have you ever gone to hill stations? or uh, any you know mountain area okay so what happens that your your voice comes back so it's like reflects back it bounces back for example you said hello and then you again hear the same voice hello 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 so what is this voice which is coming again and again and again it is your echo okay we call it as echo if we shout or clap near a suitable reflecting object such as a tall building or a mountain, we will hear the same sound again a little later, right? This sound which we hear is called an echo. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram, so this is your sound source, your object, and your original wave. So it travels slower in these areas, okay? That's why you, it is reflected back after some time, after a little later, right? Minimum distance to hear an echo, okay? So, if you want to hear an echo, it sounds interesting, no? So, speed of sound to be 344 meter per second at a given temperature, okay? It has to be 344 meter per second, say at 22 degrees Celsius in the air. The sound must go to the obstacle and reach back to the ear of the listener on the reflection after 0 0.1 seconds, okay? So, total distance covered will be, total distance covered is speed into time, 344 into 0 0.1, that is your 34.4 meters. Thus, the minimum distance of the obstacle from the source of the sound must be half the distance because uh, the, it is the total distance which we are taking. No, so uh, like from here to here and then to here. So, if total is like of, of the entire journey is 34.4 meter from A to again to A, then what is your uh, distance for one way journey? It will be half of 34.4 that is your 17.2 meters okay so it is the minimum distance to hear the echo reverberation reverberation okay reverberation a sound created in a big hall will persist by repeated reflection from the walls until it is reduced to a value where it is no longer audible have you all gone have you all gone to cinema halls so there you know the voice persists okay the repeated reflection that results in this persistence of sound is called reverberation. Okay. So, this is a reverberation. It comes to your voice. So, cinema halls are designed this way for reverberation to occur because they want to attract the audience, right? So, let's do this question. A person clapped his hands near a cliff and heard the echo after 5 seconds. 
what is the distance of the cliff from the person if the speed of the sound v is taken as 346 meter per second okay so let's do this question together okay so your velocity is given as velocity is given as 346 meter per second and time taken for hearing the echo is how much echo is heard after 2 seconds okay so this this mistake it is 2 seconds echo is heard after 2 seconds so time taken is 2 seconds so what is the distance traveled we know distance is equals to velocity into time that is a 346 into 2 okay so value in the, this example is 2 seconds okay so 346 into 2 that is your 692 meters okay so in 2 second the sound has to travel twice the distance between the cliff and the person hence the distance between the cliff and the person is how much it will be half of this right Six ninety two upon two. That is your three forty six meters. Okay. So, right now, one more question: A person clapped his hands near a cliff and heard the echo after five seconds. Okay, if he heard the echo after five seconds, same velocity into time three forty six into five. That is your one seven three zero meters. Okay, and if we have to find the distance between cliff and the person, we will divide it with. Two, right? Because it will be half the distance, half way, right? It is eight sixty-five meters. Okay. An echo returned in three seconds. What is the distance of the reflecting surface from the source? Given that the speed of the sound is three forty-two meter per second. So speed of sound is three forty-two meter per second. Echo returned in three seconds. So what will be the distance traveled by sound? Distance traveled is velocity into time. That is your one zero two six meters. In the given interval of time, sound must travel a distance that is twice the distance of the reflecting surface and source. Right? There we were taking half because we wanted to take the half uh, one-way journey. But when we want to take the entire journey, it will be twice the distance. Right? From here to here and to here. Right? So now the distance of reflecting surface will be one zero two six meter divided by two. That is your five one three meters. Uses of multiple reflection of sound. so megaphones or loud hailers horns musical instruments such as trumpets shehnais are all designed to send sound in a particular direction without spreading it in all directions okay so whichever device you have right these trumpets and horns so they have you know these shapes so that the voice goes into a particular direction and it doesn't spread in all the directions okay so these were the examples of multiple reflection you can also see for example you know doctors use these test stethoscopes right so right so what happens in these stethoscopes they work on the principle of multiple reflection so that the voice doesn't go in all directions but the voice you know they are just seeing this okay so it is it goes like this and this and this in it held it it is based on the principle of multiple reflection first this reflection you know and then this reflection is the re reflected version of the earlier reflection so one reflected ray be becomes the incident ray for the another ray right so it is based on the principle of multiple reflections for instance if this is your incident ray okay this is your reflected ray okay this is again your reflected ray for this reflected ray this ray is your incident ray right then this is your reflected ray for this reflected ray this is your incident ray right so this is how the principle of multiple reflection works why are the ceilings of concert halls curved the ceiling of concert halls are curved because people seated at the back rows of the hall may not clearly hear the speaker sound so you know the people who made these cinema halls and concert halls they applied you know physics to it okay the principle of sound right because you know concave surfaces concave surfaces reflect the sound that is why the ceiling is made curved so that the sound is reflected and for the you know viewers who are sitting at the end they can also hear the sound range of hearing in humans so you know 
humans can only hear it's not only uh, because it's too much but still humans can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and how much is 20 kilohertz it is equal to 20000 hertz okay so if there is some sound which is below 20 hertz humans can't hear okay if there is a sound which is above 20 years hertz then also humans can't hear that however children in the 5 years of age can hear the sound up to 25000 hertz okay so as we grow up we can only hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilo hertz okay infrasound in, infrasonic sound or infrasound okay what is this sound below the frequency of 20 hertz is called infrasonic or infrasound okay so below 20 hertz this sound is infrasonic or infrasound okay then from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz it is the sound of human range okay and then from above for above 20 kilohertz this is your ultrasonic waves or ultrasound or ultrasound okay for example simple pe pendulum produces sound below 20 hertz okay so that's a infrasonic sound or infrasonic or infrasound so ultrasound right above 20 kilohertz ultrasound is produced by dolphins bats and porpoises okay also uh, have you heard of these ultrasounds which are done for medical purposes right so there also ultrasonic waves are used applications of ultrasounds right in your scans right in your medical scans right you do ultrasound whenever there is any issues or you know if if a woman is pregnant she goes under this ultrasound to examine the baby right so this is like ultrasonic waves are used in this so this is the device which is used okay so metal block okay it has detector and it is ultrasound what is sonar so what is the full form of sonar what is sonar basically sonar is sound navigation and ranging as the name suggests it navigates the sound and it is the tells the range right sonar is a device that uses ultrasonic waves so sonar works on ultrasonic waves okay ultrasonic waves which waves waves which were above 20 kilohertz okay okay sonar is a device that uses ultrasonic waves to measure the distance direction and speed of underwater objects okay so for example your submarines we we have submarine sonars right sonar consists of a transmitter and a detector and is installed in a boat or a ship okay let the time travel between transmission and reception of ultrasound signal be t and the speed of sound through sea water be v okay so the total distance will be 2d right for the entire journey from a to b and then from b to it so the entire journey if this is d coming back is also d total distance is 2d so to 2d distance is traveled by ultrasound so distance is equals to velocity into time so 2d is equals to v into t for sonar devices right this method is called echo ranging okay what is this method called echo ranging okay so sonars so sonars are like used in ships submarines you know to detect the various distances okay they are measured with the help of sonar devices so let's do this example a ship sends out ultrasound that returns from the seabed and is detected after 3.42 seconds if the speed of ultrasound to sea water is 1531 meter per second what is the distance of the seabed from the ship okay so let's do this question okay so let's quickly do this question okay so what is the time between um, ultrasound and de detection okay so your time between the transmission and detection is transmission and detection is given to be 3.42 seconds 
ओके सो वॉट इज द स्पीड ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड इन सी वॉट इज स्पीड ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड इन सी वॉटर वॉट इज इट गिवन टू बी इट इज गिवन टू बी वन फाइव थ्री वन मीटर पर सेकेंड ओके सो डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाई अल्ट्रासाउंड इज टू डी वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन राइट वी स्टडी नो टू डी इज इक्वल टू वी इन टू टी राइट सो डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाई अल्ट्रासाउंड इज इक्वल टू टू डी राइट सो नाउ योर वी इन टू टी योर वन फाइव थ्री वन इन टू थ्री पॉइंट फोर टू सेकेंड राइट योर डिस्टेंस इज इक्वल टू फाइव टू थ्री सिक्स मीटर्स दिस इज योर टू डी राइट टू डी इज इक्वल टू वी इन टू टी फॉर this right टू डी इज इक्वल टू फाइव टू थ्री सिक्स मीटर्स सो वॉट विल बी योर डिस्टेंस कवर इट विल बी डिस्टेंस ऑफ द सी बेट फ्रॉम द शिप विल बी फाइव टू थ्री सिक्स अपॉन टू इज इक्वल टू टू सिक्स वन एट मीटर्स दैट इज नियरली इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट सिक्स टू किलोमीटर्स ओके सो दिस इज योर डिस्टेंस ऑफ द सी बेट फ्रॉम द शिप लेट्स डू वन मोर क्वेश्चन अ समर इन एम एच अ सोनार पर्स विच रिटर्न फ्रॉम Under water cliff in one point zero two seconds. If the speed of the sound in salt water is one five three one meter per second, how far away is the cliff? Time taken is one point zero two seconds. Okay, speed of sound in salt water is one five three one meter per second. Okay, so distance we just calculated this right. Very easy. So structure of human ear. This is the structure of human ear. you can just go through this structure okay this part is called pinna this is hammer this is anvil this is stirrup so you should know about your human ear right like what are the parts of the human ear so this part is known as outer ear from this auditory canal to this part right from to this tube it is your middle ear and this is your inner ear okay so these are some parts you can just go through it okay So let's do a quick revision. Sound is produced due to vibration of different objects. Sound travels as a longitudinal wave through a material medium as successive compressions and rarefactions. Right? Sound is a combination of compressions and rarefactions. Compressions were in high pressure region, and rarefactions is low pressure region. Right? Sound is a mechanical wave and cannot travel through vacuum. Mechanical wave wave means it needs medium to travel. Okay. Distance between two consecutive compressions or two consecutive rarefactions is your wavelength. The time taken by the wave for one complete oscillation of the density of pressure of the medium is called time period. Right. the number of complete oscillations per unit time your complete cycles right is known as frequency and frequency is the in reciprocal of your time right the speed wave frequency nu and the wavelength lambda of sound are related by the equation v is equals to nu lambda the law of reflection of sound this is very important it states that the directions in which the sound is incident and the reflected make equal angles with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of the incident and these three lie in the same plane just like we saw in that experiment when we took two pipes right and we could conclude from there that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so you have studied these in law of reflections of light right but they also follow in for sound they are also applicable for sound right so angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and all the three lie in the same plane at the point of incidence The amount of sound energy passing each second through unit area is called the intensity of sound. Sound uh, properties of sounds are like pitch, loudness, quality, amplitude and all of these are determined by corresponding wave properties. Audible human range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Sound waves with frequencies below audible range are infrasonic and sound waves above frequencies below audible uh, above the order audible range Are ultrasonic, right? Below twenty hertz, infrasonic. Twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz, human range, 
and above 20 kilohertz ultrasonic correct ultrasound has many medical and industrial applications okay it is used in x-rays also and and here we came to the end of the chapter i hope you all have understood sound okay do all the questions do revise and if you have any doubts feel free to post and ask bye bye and have a great time